Do not stand at my grave and weep by Mary Elizabeth Fry. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift, uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. To begin with, we start with the title. Do not stand at my grave and weep. So this poem is by Mary Elizabeth Fry. Immediately from the title, we know that there is some sort of impending death, right? Someone's going to die, which could be all of us as humans all die. But there's also this element of um, the author talking to friends and family saying, don't cry when you're at my grave. So after we've read the title, it's nice to just read the poem. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I'm the diamond glints on snow. I'm the sun on ripened grain. I'm the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I'm the swift, uplifting rush of quiet birds in circling flight. I'm the soft star shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. What a great poem. So, now that we have an idea of, of what the actual poem is, let's do some basic things like count the lines. If we count each of the lines over here, right, so we see this is one, if we can use our pencil, we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, some sonnets have 14 lines, but there are also sonnets with eight. The next thing that's really helpful, especially if we're trying to figure out um, what a poem is, is to try and figure out what's called the rhyme scheme, right? So we look at the end rhyme, so that's the very last word of each line, and we see what it rhymes with. So if we say weep is our A, then sleep also rhymes with weep, so we would also assign that an A. And then throughout the rest of the poem, if there was any other um, weep, sleep, heap, peep, that would also get an A. So next we have a blow, so that's not an eeps, so we'll give it a B. And then snow, which is also a B. Grain does not rhyme with snow, so we started our C rhymes. I think you see a pattern here. We have hush and rush with D, and flight and night with E. <laughs> and then our final rhyming, rhyming couplet, which is traditional in a sonnet, is FF. So um, this, is, this is a special type of um, poem. It is called a rhyming couplet poem. And uh, that kind of, I'm sure you can see why. There's all the rhyming couplets there. Uh, the next thing that's fun to do with a sonnet to make sure that it is a sonnet is that it fits this, the, the rhythm, right? So the cadence. We, if we go back and actually read the words again, we'll see that some of the words are stressed and some of the words are unstressed. So. Do not stand at my grave and weep. Right, we have the real substance of the poem there. The she's not putting the emphasis on do. The emphasis is on not. Right. Do not stand at my grave and weep. Right. So if I'm putting all these arrows in, right, we have all of these. Oh, Sorry, I'm getting this pencil. Grave and weep, right? So this same pattern goes throughout the whole poem. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. It's almost like a heartbeat, right? Dun 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 dun. And that's what it was actually mirrored off of. It it truly brings the poem to life, right? We can hear the beating heart of the poem itself. So
rhythm, we have the number of lines, we have the rhyme scheme, and that's great. But there's a lot more to this poem, and that has to do with the imagery that's within it, right? Don't stand at my grave and weep. We have directions right out of the, from the very beginning, right? I am not there, I do not sleep, right? More to this person than just their body. Then we get into where they are, right? I'm a thousand winds that blow, I'm the diamond glints on snow, I'm the sun on ripened grain, I'm the gentle autumn rain. So what is that symbolizing there? If we go through it closely, we see that those are different times of year, right? We have the, the fall winds, we have the winter snow, we have the, the growing grain in spring, and then again the gentle rain in autumn. So all times of the year, there's imagery that, that this person wants to evoke their spirit, right? When you awaken in the morning's hush, I'm the swift, uplifting rush of quiet birds in circling flight. So that's really interesting, right? Right there, the, the poem goes on, it wraps around, and it, the, the message itself pulls you through the poem in the same way that birds would be flying, right? So very exciting there how the author is able to really use the language to also evoke the same meaning as what they're speaking about, right? These circling birds. Also, if we look close there, there's the reference to the morning all the way to the starshine at night, right? So this person is in all types of the day, but they're also in all times of the year, right? So then we have the final rhyming couplet. And in a lot of um, sonnets, that's where there's a twist, right? A change in the meaning. So, do not stand at my grave and cry. We have the same, almost the same as the title, but it's different, right? Instead of weep, we have cry here. Um, that repetition usually serves a purpose, right? And be below that we have, I am not there. Second time in the poem, exact same warnings. I am not there, right? I did not die. So think about that. What does that mean? Why did the author choose to use a sonnet for this poem? 